Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are here together, standing on sacred property, a synagogue, a house of prayer, where 24 hours ago saw terrorism in the worst of way. Yesterday was the last day of Passover. Passover, we celebrate our freedom, our independence from slavery. Yesterday was the day that we came together for memorial service for those from the past generations. My wife and I came here 33 years ago. This was an empty piece of land. I was 24 years old, she was 20 years old. We dedicated our life to do good for humanity. We built this community center with the help of all of our members and our supporters and our philanthropists. It was no easy task. We built it with one goal in mind, that this should be a warm home, a welcoming home, a safe home, that people from all walks in life can come and partake in all of our programs, from our preschool, our synagogue, our wonderful friendship circle serving children with special needs. This is what we are all about. After 33 years, we did not expect what happened here yesterday. I was preparing for my sermon. I walked out of the sanctuary and I walked into the lobby and I met my dear friend, Lori Kay, a blessed memory. She came here because her mother recently passed away and she wanted to honor her mother at the memorial service. She invited her daughter Hannah to come and sit with her, her only daughter, who drove down from LA to be with her mother for the memorial service. She looks at me in the lobby. She says, Rabbi, what time is Yisker? What time is the memorial service? I told her at 11.30. I went to my office to freshen up. I came back and Lori is there. For those of us who know Lori, know that she is a person of unconditional love. I have known her for close to 25 years. She was a pioneer member from our congregation. She used to work for Wells Fargo. She helped secure us the loan for this building, which was a very difficult task in the early 90s. She was one that went out of her way to always be there for those in need. When one of our members' wives was diagnosed with breast cancer, she took it upon herself to drive her to every single doctor's appointment, to be there for the children. Lori had unconditional love for all. She was the most kindest, generous, great philanthropist, and a great loyal friend, which you don't find much these days. We, my wife and I had an amazing relationship with Howard and Lori. We were there when their only daughter was born, Hannah, and they were like brothers and sisters to us. Two weeks ago, our youngest daughter got married. Lori and Howard flew to New York to dance with us at this wedding. And we just looked at the picture of the bride and Lori dancing together so beautifully. And here we are in the lobby on one of the holiest days of the year, the last day of Passover, smiling at each other. And I walk into the banquet hall to wash my hands. I walk two, three footsteps. When I hear a loud bang, I thought Lori may have fell or the table tipped over in the lobby right here. I turn around and I see a sight that I, undescribable. Here is a young man standing with a rifle pointing right at me. And I look at him, he had sunglasses on. I couldn't see his eyes, I couldn't see his soul. I froze. I, my first concern was, what's with Lori? Where did that noise come from? What's happened to Lori? And as soon as I did that, I took a look and more shots came running right at me. And I lifted up my hands 
I lost my index finger on this hand after four hours of surgery yesterday to try to save the index finger on the left hand. I turn around and I saw the children that were playing in the banquet hall. I ran to gather them together. My granddaughter, four and a half years old, sees her grandpa with a bleeding hand and she sees me screaming and shouting, get out, get out. She didn't deserve to see her grandfather like this. I ushered all the children out. Mr. Almug, Israeli war veteran, who's only too familiar with these types of scenes, ran into the banquet hall, gathered more children. He got a bullet in his leg, risking himself to save the children. And little Noah Dahan was hit by shrapnel in her leg and very close to her eye. And thank God Almug is well and Noah has been discharged from the hospital and they are in recovery. Miraculously, just miraculously, the gun jammed and in attendance at the synagogue, there was a border patrol off-duty agent, Mr. Jonathan Morales, who recently discovered his Jewish roots. He would travel three and a half hours from El Centro to pray with us at our shul, at our temple. He felt great camaraderie here. He felt this is his house of worship. And many of times I'd say, Jonathan, you work for the Border Patrol. Please arm yourself when you are here. We never know when we'll need it. As soon as the gun jammed, and as soon as the shouting was going on, he jumped up in pursuit. Oscar Stewart, a former soldier, jumped into action. He tried to tackle down the gunman. The gunman just exited, ran away, got into his car. This is all I understand from hearsay. I didn't see it. And Jonathan pursued him and was able to discharge his weapon and got the car a few times. After the shooter left, this terrorist left, I turn around to assess the situation. And I walk into the lobby and I see Lori laying on the floor unconscious. And her dear husband, Dr. Howard Kay, who's like a brother to me, is trying to resuscitate her. And he faints and he's laying there on the floor next to his wife. And then the daughter Hannah comes out screaming, Daddy and Mommy, what's going on? This is the most heart wrenching sight I could have seen. I was frozen in time. I grabbed a prayer shawl, wrapped my arm, my fingers with it that was just hanging, dangling, and bleeding all over the place. My congregation was gathered outside here, and I said, I got to do something. I got up on a chair right there, and I looked at our congregation. And I said, Am Yisrael Chai. We are a Jewish nation that will stand tall. We will not let anyone or anything take us down. Terrorism like this will not take us down. We just came from Passover. At the Seder table, we sang a song, Vihi Sha'anda, that God has protected us, that in every generation they rise up against us, but God will protect us. Yesterday, this horrific, terrible event that has occurred here, in my own interpretation, Lori took the bullet for all of us. She died to protect all of us. She didn't deserve to die. She's such a kind, sweet-hearted, just a good human being. She didn't deserve to die right in front of my eyes. I was the last one to see her and to be with her. But I do know that this is Lori. This is her legacy, and her legacy will continue. It could have been so much worse. If the sequence of events didn't happen the way it happened, it could have been a much worse massacre. But I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. The Chabad Rebbe, the Grand Lubavitcher Rebbe, was my teacher. I grew up with him, and he taught me that we need to battle darkness with light. No matter how dark the world is, 
we need to think of light. A little bit of light pushes away a lot of darkness. A lot of light will push away much more. And the Rebbe would say, we all need to teach everyone, no matter what religion you're from, we need to do random acts of kindness. We need to tilt the scale. There's so much darkness now in the world, but you and I have the ability to change. I will never forget yesterday, my missing finger will forever scar me physically, but it's going to remind me how vulnerable we are and also how heroic each one of us can be. We're all created in God's image. We are all partners in creation. No matter what faith or religion you're from, we all have to make this world a better place to prevent this from ever happening again. And to this, I want to thank our dear mayor. I have been in Poway living here my whole life since I got married. Our children grew up here. Now our grandchildren are growing up here. This is literally, I felt, my safest place. Growing up in Brooklyn, New York was not a very safe place. I came to Poway because I knew it was a very safe place. And it still is the safest place. No matter what happened, we are going to keep our freedom tight and close to us. We're going to stand tall. We're going to grow from it. And I also want to thank our sheriff department, who has been ex absolutely incredible from their very first call and their response. I have enjoyed being a chaplain for the sheriff department for close to 20 years, sworn in by the former sheriff, Bill Collender. And he right away told me what my mission is going to be, is to be able to be there for the deputies and give them the optimism, give them the positive feeling that the world is yet going to be a better place. And I want to take note for other of the victims who have suffered yesterday, physically, emotionally, spiritually. The best we can do to combat is to grow, build, and be stronger and stronger and stronger. And yes, every single one of us can do that. I look around the merit of cameras that are here. The message needs to be brought out to the public. How does a 19-year-old, a teenager, have the audacity, the sickness, the, 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 the hatred of to publicize such anti-Semitism in his manifesto? How does he come here to our house of worship do what he did? Perhaps we need to go back a little earlier and think about what are we teaching our children? What are we education, or educating our children? We need to perhaps consider reintroducing in our public school system a moment of silence where children can start the day with pausing and thinking, why am I created? Why am I here? And what am I going to do? So I certainly hope we can grow from this and we could become stronger from this. Chabad Poway will survive this. I want to thank all of our community members. I want to thank all of our neighboring churches from all over San Diego to see all the religions come together and support is absolutely the warmest hug that we could have ever gotten. And to be able to be together and show unity, solidarity, I want to personally thank all of my fellow priests, ministers, who have been here with me, who have called me, have shared with me your condolences. We're so grateful for that. The community has set up a GoFundMe account to help us through this very difficult time, and we're certain that San Diego will be able to participate in doing your part in helping us rebuild and get back on our feet. I want to take this opportunity to bless everyone here with blessings of long life, great health, and let's look for peace. In yesterday, I was going to read the prophecy of Isaiah. I didn't get to do it because my hand was blown out. My, the prophecy of Isaiah was that the world is going to see better days. And it's not a prophecy of, a, of some kind of a, an idea. It's reality. We pray for it to happen. And one good deed at a time will make that happen. I'm appealing to all of our fellow Jewish members of our faith and others this Friday night, this Saturday, go to your synagogue. We need to fill up those rooms. We need to show them that terrorism, evil, will never prevail. Let's fill up the synagogues. Let's stand tall. Let's dance together. And for our Jewish people who haven't been to synagogue in a long time, this is the time to do it. This is a personal request for myself as a rabbi, 
asking you, come to synagogue this weekend just to show solidarity. And God will inspire you and bless you that we should all be blessed with greater and better times. You should no longer have to have such press conferences, but only greater and better times for all mankind should happen speedily in our days. Amen. 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 Rabbi, can I ask you? Okay. As I was in my house, I received a personal phone call from our President Donald Trump. I was amazed to answer the phone and say the Secretary of the White House is calling. And he spent close to 10, 15 minutes with me on the phone. I went, it's the first time I've ever spoken to a President of the United States of America. He shared with me condolences on behalf of the United States of America. And we spoke about the moment of silence. And he spoke about his love of peace and Judaism and Israel. And he was just so comforting that I'm really grateful to our president for taking the time and, and making that effort to share with us his comfort and consolation. And I'm open for any questions. Uh, could you have said before that this could have been much worse. Can you expand on that? Well, is this the idea that if the gun had not jammed? I mean... Well, it, I'm not an expert in this field, <laughs> but for what I have observed, that he was standing right there in the lobby. He was aiming at me in the banquet hall, but he could have as easily turned left, gone into the sanctuary where the seats were full for the memorial service, and he could have just used all of his clips that he had, and it could have been such a bloodbath. I don't even want to fathom to think about how that would be, but that's... I think we're going to try to wait with the questions till the end. We're going to hear the comments, and okay. then at the end, if there's time, we'll take some questions. Thank you, Rabbi. Sure. I'd like to ask our sheriff, Representative, to please share with us. Well, my name is Jeffrey Duckworth. Yeah, I'm, closer to the mic. Yep. Sorry. Thank you. I am Jeffrey Duckworth. I'm the captain here for the city of Poway Sheriff Station. And our hearts go out to your congregation. Uh, we will be conducting extra patrols in around not only the synagogue, but all of the religious establishments in our city and be reaching out to all of our people in the city and assuring them that we're here for them. And uh, we appreciate uh, being here and being able to tell them serve. And uh, that's, that's what we're here for. And we, we're sorry for your loss. Has a gunman been charged? I'm not going to uh, talk about the uh, anything going on right now. The Sheriff's Department Homicide Unit is in charge of the investigation, and any press releases uh, that they send out, we'll, we'll let them do that. Okay. You know how Rabbi, we cannot live in fear. That's what you want people to know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rabbi, you came face to face with the shooter. Did he say something to you? Did you say something to him when he entered the One church? second, I'm going to ask our mayor. I'm sorry. Please, Please hold your We love you. This whole community loves you. And we'll be there with you. Take two questions. Rabbi, Rabbi I can you, again. Did, did, did the shooter say anything as he entered the synagogue, and did you say anything to him in that moment? I did not see him enter. He entered already as I was walking. But when I turned around after the first shot, I didn't hear him say anything. Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi you, you, you said that you, you said that you asked your friend to hold. In the past, is that true? What was that? We, our understanding is that your congregation had trained for active shooting scenarios. Is that true? Well, the city of Poway had a conference that I attended. Many members of our congregation, where they were talking about the active shooters, how to deal with it. And how did that help you yesterday? Tr tremendously, because they evacuated so well. Um, we had so many exit doors that it was so effective that people really, they ducked down and they crawled out to safe areas. Rabbi, that's right, that's, 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 that's going to make their protection into their own hands. And that's going to be it for now. Are you trying to protect you? 
So I just want to make one announcement for everyone. 7 p.m. at Val Verde Park, there's going to be a candlelight vigil, and you are welcome to attend. Also, tomorrow is going to be the funeral for Mrs. Lori Kay. It's going to be, it's going to be probably the hardest day of my career. It will be two o'clock right over here. It's cool. You know, there's a common expression of paying last respects at a funeral. There's no last respects over here. Tomorrow we're going to salute Lori. We're going to salute her life. And we're going to keep her legacy alive. The legacy of goodness and kindness. And our heart goes out to her husband Howard and her daughter Hannah. And the show of support from our whole community at large has been exceedingly comforting to them. And I thank you all for that. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Rabbi, thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you. Hey there, sorry, I got this. Back with you. Again, my. That was the last one.